All right, guys, so we are back here for our next how-to video. And today what we're gonna be showing you guys is how to do wheelies as well as peg wheelies. Uh, this is some I've been working on for like the last, better part of the last year. And you've obviously been doing wheelies since you were younger. Yeah, but this is definitely your area, <laughs> man. You can wheelie way farther than I can. I don't know about that. Remember at the Holiday Inn? No. You went like the whole length of the bill. I couldn't even see you. Well, we'll see. We'll have to test that theory out in this video. Uh, so anyways, what we're going to be doing today is giving you guys kind of our tips and tricks on what we think makes it easier to learn how to wheelie. Uh, for example, one thing, I actually never did this, but one thing I've seen a lot is, you know, when you're first starting out, the scariest part for me at least is the idea of falling off the back of the bike, you know, onto your ass or on your back. Yes. Uh, so. I've seen a lot of people talk about what you can do is wear like a big backpack, put like a pillow or a blanket, some soft stuff in there. Um, and that way, if you do fall off the back, you just land on some padding or kind of a cushion, you know? So that's kind of like stuff or, like that. Or you could have good brakes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but when you're laying, it's still, it's just like this. I think it's a mental thing, you know? It's like a huge, for me it was at least. I would get used to- To each their own keeping two fingers on that lever and I mean keep two fingers on that lever yeah exactly yeah and we're gonna we'll go into more detail about that uh, once we start walking through everything but yeah that's pretty much it that's what we're gonna do today is go through how we learned to do the wheelies and peg wheelies uh, before we get started don't forget to check out rlosborn.com we still got some of the ring of fire merch left some select sizes um, and then if you guys enjoy the video, don't forget to like it and subscribe to our channel. This is everything, man. You watch guys on motorcycles, bicycles, big bikes, whatever. If they're doing a wheelie on a quad, they got their foot on the brake. It's a whole, it's just pedaling and managing flipping over by grabbing your brake. Yeah. And you said, oh, you do one finger or two fingers on the brake, back brake? Um, if I've been off for a while, then I'm two fingers, but these brakes work really good, so I use one finger. Um, if you got crappy brakes, get better brakes, because crappy brakes won't save you either. Um, and then you're gonna do what Dylan did, slam on your back, and then, <laughs> And then you're, uh, you, man, it's in your head forever. So it, the, be the best way to learn is once you're wheeling is you just keep pedaling and just adjust it, adjust your wheelie with your rear brakes. Yeah. Tapping it, keep it in that right balance position. Yeah. But you I think, should be talking about this because you just yeah. went through this. Yeah. Well, let's start, let's, I'm going to say let's start at the very beginning, which is getting your bike set up for doing a wheelie. And like, as you get better, you'll see like the, like for example, the seat height and stuff like that isn't gonna be as important, but when you're learning, this stuff can be, I think, pivotal for right. making it easier. Right. So first thing is the height of their seat, right? So if you wanna step off, <clears throat> I think, what, it, what do you recommend? I mean, you want, you want the seat to be as high, high as possible where you're still able to reach the pedals and pedal all the way through. I think the idea is you just don't wanna be super low on it because then your knees are kind of like up in your chest. You don't have as much power when yeah. pedaling. But the, the young guys that are, you know, really light, their seat's like way down there and it's it's tilted like this. I'm starting to go in that direction, tilt it forward. Yeah. Because then what they're doing is they got, if the seat's flat right here, man, it's like you're sitting on a stool. Yeah. And then they're just guiding everything with this brake here. And, uh, you know, so. Well, but for, so we're talking about learning though. We're talking about learning. I put the seat, I like it high because it's comfortable. I can sit down and start, Yeah. you know? Yeah, I think, yeah, you want to sit on the bike and have it so that your feet are, you're almost on your tippy toes to touch the ground is what I think is best. Yeah, I'd agree with that. When I was testing the uh, Revolution BSD Hub, it had a 14 tooth on the back and I couldn't get a small enough sprocket on the front. And it was so hard to get the front wheel up. Now I'm back to a 12 tooth with a 25 and BSD is working on a 12 tooth, I think, or he's looking around. So that's um, another one is the gearing is super important. Um, gearing. If it's a really tall and hard gearing to pedal, you're gonna have a really tough time getting the front of that bike up. Um, yeah. Same thing though, if it's too 
short of a gear or too low of a gear, too easy. Well, what we used to say in the old days, tall would be really big, high. slow, and then easy would be, you know, it's yeah. winding out. So, if so it's you, too you want easy. kind of a happy medium where you, where you can still move around, but it's easy to get up. Yep. And also, I mean, I ran 165 cranks, and I like the 175s. Gives you a little extra crank, a little extra power when you're trying to pull up the front wheel. Yeah. And then another one too is the tire or the wheel size. So like, for example, a 20 inch bike, that's really freaking hard to do a wheelie on versus like a 29 inch will make it easier for learning. Say that again. <clears throat> the size of the tire on the bike or yeah. the wheel size. So like a 20 inch, we know like, cause they loop out so quickly. Yeah. Um, trying to learn wheelies on a 20 inch is probably not the best idea, right? You, I'd recommend like. Well, it depends if you're 10 years old. Right. Or 11 or 12 or something. You know you're you're going to be fine on on a 20 inch um, so i think in general a bigger t wheel size or tire size though yeah for the rider makes it easier so once you've got you know the gearing you've got the right size bike you got your seat set up properly um <clears throat> it's time i'd say that's about time where you can start trying to actually do the wheelie right yeah you know you got your finger on this brake that's mandatory you kind of pedal and lean back see that it's my pedal is going down and I'm leaning back yep. to get that front wheel up. And so when you're starting, you're gonna do something like this. You're just gonna do a little wheelie and hit your brake. Like that. So you get used to stopping yourself and then you can Try tapping your brake twice. Uh, this is something I recommend, and that's going all the way over. Going all the way over, what do you mean? Yeah, which would be like. Oh, okay, like falling backwards. You know, and stepping off, get used to stepping off. Just go through the preliminaries. Yeah. What's gonna feel like to step off. And then, once you get used to that, you know how to use your brake. Then you're going to try to move into keeping the wheel up and just keep pedaling though. And just ride your brakes. Sorry, I was showing you guys kind of that first pedal. And that's kind of one of the key components to doing this, wouldn't you say? Uh, yeah. That, that first pedal is kind of everything. Um, <clears throat> for me, I use my right foot as the first one, or my strong foot is my right foot. So most people start it with their strong foot. Uh, and it's, the idea is um, you wanna get all your power that lifts the front wheel up off the ground through, from that first push or that first pedal. I see a lot of people trying to yank the bike up with their handlebars and trying to use all of that force for getting it up. And it is possible to do that, but it'll take a toll on your back, first of all. Yes. Um, and second of all, it's just not as easy. You're, you're not gonna be balanced when, once you get up to that right spot for the wheelie. You're gonna have used all your momentum, all your kind of energy to pull the bike up and it's gonna be hard for you to kind of sustain that balance. So what I try to do is, and I do a combination of some pulling up, but mostly just from my first kick and you just wanna pedal down really hard and right, you gotta learn the timing of it, but right as you pedal down, you wanna lean back and kind of pull up on your handlebar slightly. And that's how you get the bike to kind of jump up into that wheelie position. Um, so that's, that's one thing I've noticed. Leaning back helps a lot as well. Uh, you're gonna, it's gonna be really scary to lean back, but as you get more comfortable over time and through repetitions, you're gonna see it like leaning back, you almost are able to use your body as a balancing point or like a counterweight uh, to keep that front wheel up. Uh, and then one other thing I wanted to say real quick too, is just the idea of the balance point. I think we should explain that. So, you know, really basically the idea of the wheelie is you're, you're balancing the bike. If you think of it as like, almost like a pie chart, you know, you have this area on the pie chart where when you're inside that area, the bike is kind of balanced up. And if you go too far back, the bike's gonna fall backwards. If you go too far forward, the, the front wheel's gonna drop down to the ground. Uh, and so what you're doing is you're using your pedals, the power from your pedals that pushes the bike up, and then 
your brake, which is what brings the tire back down, and you're trying to use those two different things to keep the bike in that part of the pie chart, which is the balancing point. Yeah. Does that make sense? Very much. So um, once you're up there, really, and this is really an oversimplification, but what it is is you're staying inside that balance point by using your pedals to push the bike back up if it goes too low, and then using that back brake to bring the tire back down if it goes too far back. If you're looking at bikes or if you already got a bike or whatever, the space between here, if this tire, the closer this tire is to the seat tube right there, the easier it's going to be to wheelie because the tire is going to be kind of under you. Where if you have a long rear end, the bike's way out there, like a BMX, like a pro race bike, it's got a longer rear end because they want power to keep the front wheel down. They don't want it to wheelie. It's going to be a lot harder to wheelie that. So you want a shorter rear end, or sometimes you can shorten your rear end in the slots, which will help a whole lot too. I noticed too, like, like me, and some the older guys that have been wheeling a long time, we kind of cruise the wheelies. We sit back and just kind of cruise it where the young guys that are really good, they, lean, they get super sharp because they use the gyration of their front wheel to move them around. And the more straight up and down you are, the easier the bike's going to move. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, that's true too, yeah. And that's kind of where I'm going. I want to get to where my seat's pretty flat. And you're just like sitting on a stool gliding along, you <laughs> yeah. know, using your brakes and pedaling. So another tip or a point that I found helps a lot when learning is being on a smooth, flat surface. That makes it a lot easier. Uh, if it's super bumpy, rough, like cobblestone or whatever, I mean, it's obviously you can wheelie on it, but in terms of learning, it's a lot easier to be on some smooth ground. Uh, going uphill can make it a little easier as well. Um, but I found just flat ground is perfect. And again, for me, um, this is how I am with every trick I learn. It's really just once you have those basic pointers or tips down, the fundamentals of how to do it, I just do as many repetitions as I can over and over again, just practice, practice, practice. Um, and that's how I'm able to get it down. It's, there isn't really a big secret, you know, once you have the fundamentals and the idea of what you're trying to accomplish. Uh, there is no secret to landing it other than just practicing it until you're able to do it. And I found, you know, when you put in at least an hour a day, you'll notice each day you'll see things that the day before seemed like impossible. The next day they don't seem as scary or as impossible. It seems a little more obtainable. So uh, that's what I found worked best for me is just practicing a little bit every day. Um, having that motivation to stay on top of it and really, I guess, the desire to want to be able to do it. Um, and you'll figure it out. Number one thing is do it over and over and over and over and over and over and over. Just keep doing it and it'll come and you'll learn all this stuff as you go. Keep it in the back of your head. Don't try to remember everything that we said um, and watch guys that are good, how yeah. they do it, you know? Yep. For, for me, I think with the peg wheelies, I didn't start doing those until I started getting the regular wheelie down a little bit. Um, once I did start trying the peg wheelies, those a lot easier to pick up, I think, because I had uh, you know, a lot of what you do on a wheel, regular sitting down wheelie transitions over into the peg wheelies, but there are obviously some different things too. So obviously you got to have pegs on the back of your bike. Um, uh, you're not going to be able to pedal, so it is good to do this going downhill. You know, I was thinking one of the, the best thing where I started to move forward on peg wheelies, what you told me, Now I was putting your foot, you're more on the ball of your, of yeah. your foot. Now I, I don't... You know, everybody's different, but that works for me. It makes the front end lighter and more, more controllable. I found, yeah, I found when I'm like right on the middle of my foot, like the arch, I guess you call it, you almost feel like you're stuck. You're, you're not mobile. You're, it's harder to shift or uh, direct the bike around. Yeah. Once you get closer to the toes or I guess the ball of your feet, it's like more springy. It's more agile. You can turn it way faster and more easily. It's just a lot, a lot more effortless. Yeah, you know what I'm learning? It's, it's kind of funny that you get to a certain point where your brakes, for me, they screw me up. Um, like yeah. I'm trying to learn peg circles and I, I go way farther if I try to do it without my brakes. Yeah. You know, it's an absolute emergency. In fact, I start without my finger on my brake. You're really safe. You're like this, one foot's off. You flip over, your foot's already back. So you don't, the brakes aren't as critical. Yeah. 
but learning it without your brakes is uh that really helps you with your balance and that's how you're going to go a long ways yeah it's almost like a manual you know like where you're not using your brakes you're just it's all balance yeah brakes are kind of like the emergency like safety net for if you go too far back because again yeah if you hit those brakes it's going to kill all your momentum because you can't pedal right and it's just going to come right down Another big one is the balance or like the dead leg that we hang out there. <laughs> so, we, I mean, I do see people riding where they have both feet on the pegs while they're doing the peg wheelie, which seems way harder for me. I, I can't even do that. What I do is I use my strong foot to stay on the peg, which is my right foot. And then I hang, if you kind of want to show them, my left foot off and use that as like a counterweight that balances me out. So, or I'll kind of demonstrate real quick. You'll see, see the back leg there. Um, and that's really important for me for finding my balancing point, uh, keeping everything going. I even use it to kind of direct where I'm going. So I'll move my leg is constant, constantly moving around, uh, helping just like I said, balance or helping me maneuver the bike. So those are kind of the main pointers for peg wheelies. I suggest kind of getting the main wheelie, regular wheelie down first before trying to move on to this, but you can also kind of learn them together. They do help complement each other and that you know like skills you pick up from doing one trick will help you with the other all right guys we're back here real quick because we actually forgot to talk about one of the more important parts of learning how to wheelie and that's learning how to feather your brakes simply put it's you're not going to be able to just lock up your brake and keep the front wheel up because if you do that it's going to pull the tire right down so feathering your brake is basically do you want what well, do you want to explain it? you know better than i do Here's the whole thing. You're wheeling. If your front end gets too low, you got to start pedaling. You got to pedal really hard, and that's to bring fun. the front end back up. To get the front end back up, right? If you go back too far, your wheelie is done. So the way we control that is pedaling. You start pedaling before it's too low, and as this just takes experience, time doing it. But when you're back, you just lightly tap your brakes or barely put them on, just enough to keep you from going over. And you know, eventually your balance point, you're, you're gonna be like this in your balance point, you know, trying to keep this up, hitting your brakes too hard, going too far forward. And then eventually you'll watch the good riders and they just stay like this because they're they've got their pedaling and their and their um, what was this called again? Feathering. Feathering. They got it down so good that you don't even study it like they're doing. And that's one reason why I say learn your wheelies, pedaling with your brakes just a little bit on. Get that happy medium and you kind of can build from there. Yeah. And you'll, you'll, this is another thing is it's all like feel and feeling where you are in your balance point, feeling how much brake you need. And that's just something that comes with repetitions and time and practice. Well, what was your big breakthrough? Because there was a point where you know, you could go, you know, 10 feet mm -hmm. and then, but you, you were always worried about going back <laughs> or worry about dropping your front end. And somehow you figured out how to get all the way across the parking lot. I seriously think it was just like practicing every day in the repetitions. Yeah. I mean, obviously following the pointers and stuff. And again, it feathering the brake that came with time it wasn't something i could learn right away especially with those maguras they're pretty sensitive yeah um but definitely you know learning how to feather and i was going to say the the really good riders you'll see they almost don't even need to use their brake and when they do kind of like you were saying it's just a quick little tap for an yeah. adjustment yeah um but yeah for, for me my explanation of what feathering the brake is is just being able to pull it so lightly that it's just starting to apply pressure on the brakes um, and what that does is it allows you to do really, really minor adjustments where when you lock up the brake or just pull it a little too tight, like I was saying, it's just going to drop the wheel and you're not going to have any control over how far it goes or anything like that. Um, I was thinking this song. Yeah. Are you on a roll? Yeah, I was. <laughs> well, okay. I was going to say one thing that kind of helps for learning the feathering is if before you even pedal or anything, just kind of roll your bike and try pulling the lever as lightly as possible till you can feel a little resistance from the brakes. And that'll kind of give you an idea of what you're after, what you're trying to figure out. Because it is a whole different 
ball game, trying to, when you're pulling the bike up, trying to find your balance point, and then you also got to remember to feather it. That, that's what, that took me a while because what I would do is I would kind of panic and I'd pull the brake real hard and just drop the wheel. Yeah. So try, try feathering it like that with the, both wheels on the ground just rolling. Um, I found sometimes it helped when I would pull the brake just a little bit just till it started to apply pressure and uh, brake on the wheel a little bit. Then I would try starting the wheelie while holding the brake in that position, just so you already have a little brake on there. That's interesting. And then you can try just letting go of the brake to raise the wheel up a little more, and then you already have that reference point for where to feather it at. Yeah. So, what were you gonna say? And you know, there's there's other. Eventually, you're get, you'll start doing wheelies. I remember watching Dylan do this. He'd start doing a wheelie and he'd fall over, and he'd just start falling. <laughs> but you. You will not be successful at wheelies unless you understand body English, which is just moving your body to compensate for the movement of your bike. Shifting around, yeah. So like if, if you're like this and your bike's starting to go to the side, well, if you lean to the side or stay stiff, you're going to the side. But you can counterbalance by going over here, you know, and you still keep pedaling, keep your brakes on, and you'll bring it back. Yeah. Or if your wheel front wheel is still spinning, you can use that to correct you to bring yourself back into line because this is a big gyro. That's why you'll see guys that are really good. They get pedaling really fast, get into a wheelie so that the front wheel is just whizzing. And they can they can drive themselves, and it's not easy to do. They can drive themselves like this because of the gyration of the front wheel. Okay, I'm going into it. I'm gonna pedal down and lean back. I'm on my brakes just barely. I'm also leaning my body side to side you know, like this or that way, whatever to keep it straight. But notice I'm not stopping pedaling. I'm just keeping my front wheel from going over by holding on to my brakes. I'm gonna lean back a little bit. And again, I use my right foot as my power foot. And I kind of get up to that balance point, tap the brake a little bit just to make sure that I'm That's not going hard back to talk too far. and do it, huh? <laughs> yeah, it is. But that was good. So once you're up here, it's really just making sure you stay in that balance point. I keep leaning back. I try to stay at the upwards part, steeper, uh, as that makes it easier to balance and stay up. So it, it's easier if you're steeper and you're more towards the back of the balance point, uh, because then you're, all the weight's just on the back wheel. You're not holding the bike up where if you're more forward where the wheel is closer to the ground you're towards the front of the balance point so to speak you're going to be constantly just pulling and trying to pedal that front wheel back up and you're just going to be muscling the bike the whole time i'm going to do a peg wheelie now for you guys and again it's really important to have a lot of speed going into it what was that go ahead you're good you want to have a lot of speed going into it and again you're going to be using leaning back as your way to pull the bike up steeper, and then again, your brakes for pulling it back down if it goes too steep. So, let me get some speed. And hanging that one foot off helps because it allows you to just step off the bike if need be really, really quick. Ugh! That foot, ball of your foot on the back peg, that's been the one, the one major step forward. Say that again, doing what? When you told me to put the ball of my foot on the far, on, the, on my back peg instead of the arch. Yeah. So much easier. More towards the toes helps. You wanna try again? Yeah. Okay. How do you keep it going straight? I, I don't. <laughs>
case you were wondering, I'm listening to Credence, Justin Johnson, and Ted Nugent's Stranglehold. Ted Nugent's first album, but good writing music. Yeah, we, these are cool. They're fun, man. They're, it's a good feeling, especially when you start carving a little bit and, uh, you know, you start feeling that gyration of that front wheel. But And, you know, this is also a really good thing to do is, you know, go into a parking lot and look at the parking spots and just go, I want my front wheel to go one parking yeah, spot. Yeah, that's what we did that's at the beginning. Yeah. That's what Dylan and I started doing. And, man, we <laughs> graduated like five days in about five minutes. Yeah. And then go to the next one and so on. And, uh, and you'll get it. What about do you are wheelies one of those tricks that feels really good for you too or is it not so much it does feel good um you know when i see like the guys on the rides that are like just coast they're just like this circles coaster wheelies a little bit of pedaling yeah that looks really good and that but i'm split between am i gonna spend my time doing that freestyle dirt jumping mini ramps you know what am i gonna do yeah and i mean my first love is freestyle that's kind of that's the first thing i want to get to but um yeah i definitely want to learn i do practice moves every day circles and stuff yeah yeah i i see a lot of when i see these really good riders i see a lot of uh advancements that are going to come um, i mean if you look at the ground riders and freestyle riders the ground riders old and new man they there could be so much influence going between the two different styles yeah but um and even just like incorporating the wheelies into some freestyle moves kind of like what you're starting to do dude incorporating the wheelies into freestyle moves yes that's well it's all the same thing i mean we all did wheelies we were dirt jumping doing freestyle yeah it's you know everybody wants to go that's not really like that it's kind of like a little bit of everything yeah you know definitely so. cool well i think that pretty much wraps up the how-to video on wheelies and peg wheelies want to thank you guys as always for watching and your support we really appreciate it um for me, last thing I'd like to say is if you guys have another trick you want us to do a how-to video on, be sure to comment below and we'll work on that. I think probably next we're going to start working on a scuffing how-to now that um, I've kind of started to learn how to do that. We're, we're talking about maybe like a tail whip, foot jam tail whip, stuff like that. So we do have more stuff in the works, but we obviously want to hear what you guys want to see as well. So be sure to comment about that below. And as always, if you guys did enjoy the video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. Okay, cool. All right, well, yeah, thanks again for watching, you guys, and we hope you have a good rest of your day. Have a good one.